Situated in Saginaw's Celebration Square along Ezra Rust Drive, this three-acre strolling garden has sloped gently to the shore of Lake Linton for almost 50 years. It's a quiet, safe haven to view weeping cherry trees, authentic stone lanterns, and a vermilion bridge which arches over a winding stream. Hello, I'm Todd Michael Hall. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to take you on a virtual tour of a genuine 16th century style tea house, along with its rural style tea room, which is the highlight of a three acre strolling garden. We'll also discuss the history of the tea house, which is highlighted by contributions of several artists and artisans and their unique process of Japanese carpentry. Saginaw has a sister city relationship with Tokushima, Japan. Next year will mark the 60th anniversary of the Tai formed between these two cities in 1961, when Hiroyuki Takagi, a young exchange student from Tokushima, stayed in Saginaw while pursuing his field of study. When Hiroyuki returned home, he took with him a dream and enthusiasm to form a union between Tokushima and Saginaw. When he reached Tokushima's mayor, he asked Hiro, why Saginaw? Why not a well-known American city like New York or Los Angeles? Hiro replied, the people of Saginaw may ask, why Tokushima? It was through persistence, sincerity, and the support of his Saginaw host family that Hiro saw his dream realized on August 24, 1961. In 1963, Saginaw City Council dedicated an area as a physical reminder of the friendship between the two cities, and the next five years were dedicated to enormous planning and fundraising efforts. The city of Tokushima sent two stone lanterns, in addition to their greatest contribution, a landscape artist by the name of Mr. Yataro Suzue. Mr. Suzue had 45 years of experience in the 68-year-old took over operations, spending 80 days in Saginaw overseeing the construction, which included the placement of every rock, some weighing up to four tons, all without speaking a word of English. Mr. Suzue also donated several boulders, which he shipped by air, these rocks are found only in Tokushima and are prized for their bluish-green color. All I want to do is to make beauty. This is not trickery, not illusion, but trying to arrange elements such as trees, water, rocks in such a friendly relationship that there is no crowding, no competition for attention. God made nature but he gave man the power to create the art that belongs in it. Yataro Suzue. The highlight to the strolling garden is Awa Saginoan, a genuine 16th century style Japanese tea house constructed in 1985. Made with imported materials and built by Sukiya Daiku, artisanal carpenters. It is treasured for being one of the most authentic tea houses in North America. Tea house architect Tsutomu Takenaka of Sen Art Studio, who will be the designer and builder, and city planning officials from Tokushima visited in 1980 to draw blueprints of the construction. But due to the economic hardships of those years, fundraising was a challenge. Through perseverance, the two cities finally reached their funding goal by November 1984. Working side by side, the year-long construction process was the first time both American and Japanese carpenters worked together to build a tea house. The inner framework of the tea room was crafted and assembled in Japan by master carpenters trained in the centuries-old art of Japanese joinery, which uses no nails, screws, or power tools. 
Each wooden piece of the structure is carefully chosen for its quality and natural texture, and then intricately notched and fitted together by hand. Once the framework was completed in Japan, it was disassembled and brought to Michigan, where Japanese craftsmen would reassemble it inside the pre existing shell and foundation built by American workers. Jihei Takeuchi, a master Japanese carpenter from Kyoto, left an impression on his American counterparts. Trained as a sukiya daiku, an expert in centuries old tea house construction methods, Takeuchi made little noise working with his traditional implements. In place of power tools, a sukiya daiku shapes wood with nomi, a set of incredibly sharp chisels. Insisting that harsh rubbing would kill the natural grain of wood, sukiya daiku like Takeuchi would not use sandpaper. Instead, a kebiki is used, which is a handmade plane which consists of a block of wood and a sharp piece of metal. Plane surfaces are far less porous than a sanded surface and can repel most of the moisture, so there's no need for varnish, stains, or any other coating, since it would mask the natural beauty of the wood. It took Takayuchi 10 years of study to learn this dyeing art form. How sturdy is a structure built without modern equipment? Jihei Takayuchi guarantees his work for 300 years. Not only employing Japanese specialists, the tea house also utilized materials imported from Japan to make it truly authentic. From the Kitayama mountain of Kyoto came the finest Japanese cypress. Mud which was processed and sent from Shikoku Island plasters the walls. Traditional Japanese tatami flooring made of woven straw covers the tea room and shoji paper screens filter the window's light. Even the stepping stones were carefully chosen in Japan and brought here. Mr. Takenaka would accept nothing but the best. If the materials were an eighth of an inch off, if the wood was too dark or too light, work would stop until suitable replacements were found, with Takenaka reaching into his own pocket for expenses. If I built some inferior quality building, then the American people will say, Oh, so this is the Japanese standard. I don't want this to happen. I want to show my best. Tsutomu Takenaka. The guests to a tea ceremony will begin their experience by walking through the Chaniwa or tea garden. Like most Japanese gardens after the 12th century, the Chaniwa contains few, if any, flowering plants. Evergreens and shrubs are preferred, as they tend to stay green all year long, symbolizing the longevity and wisdom of old age, revered in Zen. The guests will enter the garden through a bamboo gate called Nakamon, this gate is narrow, requiring visitors to enter one at a time, discouraging conversation. The path through the garden, or roji, consists of stepping stones leading over mossy ground. The attention required to step from stone to stone shifts one's thoughts from the outside world to the here and now. The roji leads to a stone water basin called tsukubai. Here, the visitor finds a wooden ladle used to gather water pouring from a bamboo spout, or kake. Rinsing your hands and mouth at the tsukubai symbolizes purity, washing away trivial daily concerns and clearing the mind.
The roji ends with a kutsunugi ishi, or shoe leaving stone. As the name suggests, here is where the guest removes and leaves their shoes before entering the tea house. This stone is carefully chosen for its shape and intended purpose. Awasagi no one's kutsunugi ishi weighs over 5,000 pounds and, like all the roji stepping stones here, was imported from Japan. Upon entering the tea room, guests move directly to the tokonoma, or alcove. Measuring one tatami mat, the tokonoma is used to display objects meant for the guests' viewing. Though their arrangement may vary, the items placed in the tea room's tokonoma are customarily a hanging scroll, flower vase, and an item for viewing. The left-hand column of a tokonoma is a tokobashira, and is the most important aspect of the alcove. As its type of appearance influences the character of the room, the guest kneels in front of the tokonoma and bows as a sign of appreciation and respect for the host's thoughtfulness, taking time to view and admire the objects displayed for their benefit. Along with the tatami mat tea room, Awasagi no An has an adjoining ryure style room. This style was invented by 9th generation Grand Tea Master Gengen Sai Soushitsu during an 1873 exhibition held in Tokyo. This new style used benches and tables, along with a stand for the placement of tea utensils. The tea master invented this style in consideration of Westerners who were unaccustomed to kneeling on a tatami mat. Although Gengen Sai's change was initially met with criticism from the Chanoyu community, this accommodation demonstrates the sincere desire of tea masters to share Chanoyu with the world and not reserve it strictly for the Japanese. I hope you enjoyed this special tour of Saginaw's treasured landmark. The Cultural Center's staff and volunteers are honored to care for the tea house and gardens, allowing the public to appreciate and enjoy the unique beauty and culture of Japan. We look forward to meeting you someday in person. Arigato gozaimasu.